Welcome! NASA and NOAA have put together a group of solar cycle experts to come up with a prediction for solar cycle 25. This is rather like they did about a decade ago for solar cycle 24, which I was involved with. This video is going to summarize their conclusions and do a little bit of analysis of my own. And one of their conclusions, interestingly enough, is that a grand solar minimum is very unlikely. Their basic conclusion is that solar cycle 25 will be similar to or maybe larger than solar cycle 24. The graph I show here shows the data for the sunspot number for the last 10 solar cycles. In red there's a model output that compares to those cycles fairly well and then there's a projection forward using that model to solar cycle 25. In blue there's an ensemble model of the solar cycle which is an average of the output of several different models and this is generally considered a more accurate way of predicting more complicated problems like the solar cycle or the climate. However, I should point out that you should not put too much faith in such predictions. This is the equivalent plot from predictions of solar cycle 24 by David Hathaway. He confidently predicted that solar cycle 24 would be much larger than solar cycle 23. And of course, that didn't happen. Here are the panel's basic conclusions. They say that solar cycle 25 will be below average in its sunspot number. It will be similar to or slightly stronger than solar cycle 24. It'll peak in something like 2023 to 2026. Thus it will break the declining trend of the last few solar cycles. And they stated that there was no scientific evidence for a grand solar minimum occurring. Now if you go to the Solar Influences Data Center and take a look at their status of the Solar Cycle 24, you'll see they have two models that project the future. One is a CM model which says we are about solar minimum now and it indicates that the Solar Cycle 25 will erupt shortly. And the second model is the SC model which shows a much longer and slower decay of Solar Cycle 24 with a minimum sometime later this year or early next year. And it's that model I tend to go along with, especially as we've had so much activity in recent months. I think one of the problems we may be encountering here is that we're treating the sun holistically rather than treating the two hemispheres of the sun separately. Most of the activity we've seen in recent months has been in the northern hemisphere, not the southern hemisphere of the sun. The northern hemisphere sunspot number here is shown in blue and the southern hemisphere sunspot number is shown in orange. And you can see only one region in the last three months has been produced in the southern hemisphere where we've had quite a bit of activity in the northern hemisphere and that seems to be continuing into April. So what do we learn if we treat the two hemispheres separately? Well, let's take a look. So here I've plotted separately the sunspot number for the northern hemisphere shown in blue and the southern hemisphere shown in orange. You can see that the northern hemisphere rose first and peaked in 2011 whereas the Southern Hemisphere rose more slowly and peaked in late 2014. However, the Northern Hemisphere has decayed away very slowly and the Southern Hemisphere quite rapidly. So the Northern Hemisphere is basically reducing the majority of the sunspots since 2016. Let's first compare the dates of the minima between solar cycle 23 and solar cycle 24 for each of the hemispheres. You can see that the Northern Hemisphere peaked earlier than the Southern Hemisphere by about a year. Now, if you compare the times of the maxima of the Northern and the Southern Hemisphere, you get a very different picture. The Northern Hemisphere peaked in 2011, but it wasn't until three years later that the Southern Hemisphere peaked. Now, if these two peaks had occurred at approximately the same time, we would have had a perfectly normal, in fact, probably an above normal sunspot number for solar cycle 24. In fact, solar cycle 24 was only so weak because these two peaks were so far apart. Now we can use the recent rate of decay of both the southern and the northern hemispheres to project when they will reach solar minimum values. When you do that, this turns out that the southern hemisphere will be, is pretty close to solar minimum right now and the northern hemisphere won't reach that level until next year. So they're back to being a year apart. But interestingly now, the southern hemisphere had a cycle that was only 10 years long and the northern hemisphere had a cycle that was 12 years long. This means two things that the Northern and Southern Hemisphere are not in phase with one another at the moment, and neither do they have the same time constants. 
So how does this compare with the previous cycle? The picture is rather similar, though in some sense reversed. Here, the minimum and between solar cycle 22 and 23, the southern hemisphere appeared first, and then followed by the northern hemisphere. It's very difficult to say where the peak of the northern hemisphere cycle was, so I've put it in the middle there. The southern hemisphere followed again, and then we're back to the other way around uh, for the minima, where the northern hemisphere finishing first, and the southern hemisphere finishing last. Therefore, the Southern Hemisphere had a longer cycle than the Northern Hemisphere this time around. So what can we conclude from all of this? It seems that Solar Cycle 25 is likely to be similar to or somewhat larger than Solar Cycle 24. There is no scientific evidence for a grand solar minimum. We seem to be in a perfectly normal solar minimum between two solar cycles. When Solar Cycle 25 gets underway in the next year or so, the thing we need to watch is how fast the sunspots rise in each hemisphere. If they rise at a similar rate, we're going to have a, probably a larger cycle because the peaks will be coordinated better. If, however, the sunspots in one hemisphere start increasing faster than the, in the other, it means we will have a spread out maximum like we've had in the last couple of cycles and the cycle itself will be generally weaker. So keep an eye out for my monthly updates on what the sun is doing in my The Sun Now series. And also I do daily updates when there's something interesting going on on my Twitter channel. So please keep an eye on that as well. So until next time, goodbye.